Hi, my name is Paul Friedman. I'm the founder of the Marriage Foundation, and I'm proud of that because our system, our way of looking at marriage is so much better. And when you tune into these videos, you will learn so much about marriage and it'll resonate. You'll go, why haven't I heard these things before? Those are the comments that we get. And you could look at our reviews, go to the marriagefoundation.org. You could look at the comments and the YouTube videos. We're on to something here. And the topic today is, am I responsible for my spouse's happiness? And are they responsible for mine? This is a great topic. Usually when somebody is asking that question, and you may be counted among those, it's coming from a point of view of, hey, I'm not responsible for my spouse's happiness. And then you might backtrack a little bit and you might say, well, maybe a little. I mean, I don't want to make their lives miserable, right? It's usually in that kind of context. And we get questions all the time at the Marriage Foundation. You go to our website, you click on Ask a Counselor, and you can send in yours too. But this question really goes to the heart of what's totally screwed up in the Western world when it comes to marriage. I was speaking to someone the other day who's from Iceland. And so he spent some time in Scandinavia. He said, 80% divorce rate. Can you imagine 80%? The United States is a little bit above 50, but the number of marriages is down. Also, people aren't getting married because they're afraid. Why? Why should they be afraid? You get married in order to be happy, right? It's sort of the birthright of a human being to be happy. It's a birthright. Don't believe anything else. I know people love to talk about, oh, life is suffering, da 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 da. Yeah, there's challenges in life, most of them, we bring upon ourselves. But the fact of the matter is that life is supposed to be filled with joy. How do I know that? Where am I coming from when I say that? It's very simple. And you won't hear this in many places because people are afraid to broach this topic unless they're religious. And I'm not coming from a religious place, but you, I, everyone, we're souls. We don't have souls. We are souls. What we have are bodies and minds. And those are supposed to be used to get happy, to be happy. How do I know? Well, you have free will. Okay, you have free will. Let's pretend it's a binary choice. You have free will. Do you want to be happy or do you want to suffer? If you want to be happy, what's involved? Learning how. You can't change your outer environment very much. You can't really choose your outer environment in a practical way very much. But you could choose to be happy. And when you do, nothing and no one can make you unhappy. Now let's bring this into marriage, shall we? So you get married. And I know it's not articulated. It's not talked about. In fact, nothing is talked about pretty much. Before you get married, it's all romantic stuff, which is okay. But you don't talk about how you're going to make your life together happy, do you? And then later on, your spouse is complaining to you, complaining about you. They're not nice to you. They take you for granted and you take them for granted. And you're not nice to them. You complain to them. I don't care whether you're the husband or wife. It's 50-50 in this case. It's one of the few things in marriage that's truly 50-50 is that we tend to, and it's human nature. I'm not condemning you for this. It's human nature. 
but we start taking each other for granted, don't we? We become over familiar with each other. We think it's okay to argue. In fact, a big thing in marriage counseling, people go to marriage counselors to learn how to argue. It's insane. You know, I used to be a divorce mediator. Over 20 years ago, I was a divorce mediator. And I realized, wow, the people that I'm helping get a divorce, and I made a really good living at it, $300 plus a session, plus fees. <laughs> it did well. Now, don't get any ideas. Don't become a divorce mediator. You get bad karma. But I saw what happened and I decided I'm going to figure out how to help people stay married and not just stay married. Anyone can do that pretty much. I did it for my kids, but learn how to be happy in your marriage. Learn how to generate the love, to build that feeling of love in your marriage. So there's no question about whether you want to be married or not. So you don't have these crazy notions about responsibility for making each other happy. Now, I haven't been evading this question. So here is the answer. Are you responsible? Well, let's put it this way. You promised. So you tell me, are you responsible to make your spouse happy? You gave vows. If it's your wife we're talking about, you vowed to make her your queen, to love her, to cherish her, honor, support her, love her, all these positive, loving things, and your heart was overexploding with love. You promised her. Now, if you're the wife, you did the same thing. You promised him. What happened? What happened was, and it's understandable, See, this is not, I'm not using these terms to put you down. I'm using these terms so you understand. You need to understand marriage, so definitely subscribe to the channel so you can understand more. But here's what goes on. We as human beings live simultaneously to different degrees at different times on three different planes of consciousness. I'm not getting mystical. Just hear me out. So you have a body, and the body is talking to your mind all the time. It is, because the body is comprised of trillions of cells. Every one of those cells is endowed with the drive to survive. You know this. It's communicating constantly to your mind, which is sort of the chief central processing unit for you. And it's saying, be afraid. Take advantage of this. Take advantage of that. It's like the primal instinct drive communicated from your body to your mind. And your mind, because it's not hearing from you, the soul, is going, oh, okay, okay, okay. And it becomes more and more paranoid, more and more into itself. It's primal. People who live on the very primal level are psychopaths. It's all about them. Hopefully, most of them are in prisons. But we live there too. A part of us does. But as we evolve as human beings, and we're born with a certain degree of evolution, then we take on ideas and philosophies to mitigate this notorious behavior of a primal individual. And we become more mundane. We fit into society using society's moral code. Some of us go a little further. We use a deeper moral code. Some of us listen to our conscious conscience more, which is the voice of God. I said it, the voice of God. And we become more loving more beneficial to each other. But there's another plane, and that's the plane of our self as a soul. The soul I often describe as a chip off the old black. 
block. That's the part of us that is part of God. When you read in scripture that God created man in his image, he's not talking about fingers and toes. He's talking about this divine aspect, the soul. And the soul is housed in a body-mind complex. And when we live purely in that consciousness of the soul, it's all love. And these are the saints who have walked the earth and the ones who have strived. They live more and more in a place of love. Guess what? Your marriage is supposed to exist on that plane. You are in a marriage. It's a spiritual path. And you're in a marriage so you can learn how to love unconditionally because it's safe in a marriage. There is no threat. It's not like when you go to the drugstore and you're picking up a prescription and someone's trying to sell you something and they just want your money. Marriage is your safe space. I call it the sacred space of marriage. And that's where you're supposed to be living your marriage. So, are you responsible to your spouse to treat them with love, which will make them happy? You're responsible not only to them, but to yourself, because it is how you evolve. And you have to overcome these primal tendencies, these mundane tendencies, in order to do so. You have to utilize your free will to uplift yourself. And you have the perfect venue. You have a spouse who desires that, who will reciprocate as you do it. And that's what it's all about. So I'm going to read the question again. Am I responsible for my spouse's happiness? And are they responsible for mine? There's no law. But you promised. The benefit of doing this, of sticking to your vows, believe it or not, all goes to you. All of it. What they may gain from that is literally their business. And this is very deep stuff. I'm going to explain this to you. You see, we don't create love. You can't manufacture love. And I'm not talking about love the way that it's defined by Western psychology or by Google. I'm talking about the real love. You know, these guys talk about it as an abstract idea, an increased like, but you know that that's not what it is. Because when you've experienced love, think about this, it has overwhelmed your mind. You can't handle it. Some people cry. I do. Some people cry when they feel so much love. It boggles the mind. It's bigger than the both of us, as they say. It is infinite. Love is infinite. It's tangible and it's spiritual. You can't quantify it. You can't subject it to your senses and define it. But you know what real love is. You can't create love either, but you can give it. Here's how it works. By the way, these explanations are in my courses. If your marriage is not really doing well, get the course for men if you're a man. Get the course for women if you're the, a woman. Or at least just read one of my books. At a minimum, don't spend any money. Take advantage of these free videos, articles that we have. But this is the cutting edge now. So this is explained. There's only one who can create love. God. God is love. And we are his channels here in this world. Now, it's not like we're all, that's all we are. But we are his channel. And he gives his love through those who are willing to be the channel. Think of love coming in, if you want, through the back of your head. Or through the back coming into your heart. And then when you open up 
the floodgates of your heart to give that love to others, you're filled with it because you're the channel. And the channel is blessed by that which flows through it. So you're giving love. The more you give, using your free will, using your volition, the more you apply that intention of giving love, the more love you will feel. <laughs> and when you feel love, you feel joy. You cannot escape it. Not that you would want to, right? That's how it works. So are you responsible for bringing that happiness to your spouse? Because don't get into the mundane happiness of getting him or her a gift or giving him or her a little massage or cooking uh, for him or her a little treat. That's just mundane stuff. It's fleeting. The real happiness comes from love. Give that love. Give it. Push your mind's boundaries out. Remember, love is infinite. But remember also that the mind is infinitely elastic and you can push the boundaries out. You can override all of your habitual fears because that's all that prevents us from giving love is fear. Your natural state is love. Your natural state because you're a soul. You can't walk down the street outwardly giving love to everybody because we live in a dangerous world. It's true. So in the sacred space of your marriage, you can give it <laughs> to your heart's content and more. Push the boundaries of your mind. Push them out of the way so the love is going, going and fulfilling. And they will feel it only through intellectual indicators and they will feel it somewhat through their heart. But remember, our minds filter like crazy. But you'll feel it. Whew, you'll feel it. So that is the right answer to this question. Responsible? I don't know. Crazy not to. That's the right answer. You're crazy not to make your spouse happy, but make your spouse happy by loving them. Make every action that you do with them, speech, action, thoughts, loving. And boy, will you gain the benefits of that. So I'm Paul Friedman. I founded the Marriage Foundation. And now you can see why I'm so enthusiastic about marriage. And especially because I've discovered these principles that will blow your mind. And it's not out there anywhere else. You know, I didn't come from a background of psychology. I was doing divorce mediation. So I'm not one of those cats I just revealed my age, who got into psychology because I was troubled. I mean, I was, we're all troubled, right? But I didn't go the route of psychology. I didn't become a psychologist, mostly for my own sake. I got into this to help people because I discovered and I realized, wow, well, I'll tell you what actually happened, how we started the foundation. Because I was a mediator, I knew mediators. And I used to give talks at Second Saturday, which is a group for divorce. It's a support group for women. I love it when women say I'm misogynistic. I help women. So my friend said, Paul, this guy used to be a Navy SEAL. <laughs> Robert, I'm not going to tell you his last name. And he became a divorce mediator, a really good lawyer. And he said, Paul, this stuff is good because he read my first book which is Lessons for Happy Marriage. And he read my second book, Breaking the Cycle. Paul, this is good stuff. And he wrote out a check for $1,000 to start a foundation. Um, all right. <laughs> and so that's how the Marriage Foundation came into being. That was in 2008 or 2009. But prior to that, I was already helping people with these techniques. In fact, I was in San Diego, so word got out and I was getting all these people from Hollywood driving down. You know, th these are people, you go to them. I didn't go to them. They came down to see me. Screenwriters, actors, lighting technicians, 
the word got out. So this is it. You have an opportunity to have the most amazing marriage, better than anything you can imagine. Take advantage. God bless and take care. And like this video and leave a comment. Thanks. Take care.